Okay, welcome back, class 12, to the online bio classes. We will continue with the second chapter, sexual reproduction in plants. In the previous class, we had already studied about structure and development of male gametophyte. Today, we will continue with the female gametophyte. As you can see, this diagram is very important. This is the diagram of LS, that is longitudinal section of ovule. What is ovule? Ovule is the part of the ovary that contains or that changes into seeds after fertilization. Like ovary develops into fruit. Now, ovule is also known as mega sporangium, the other name. Okay, the other name of ovule is mega sporangium. The body of ovule consists of a mass of parenchymatous body. These cells are called parenchyma cells. So this mass of parenchymatous cells is called nucellus. Okay, what is it called? Nucellus. So if it is asked what is nucellus, it is a body or the mass of parenchymatous cells which forms the part of ovule. So this is the diagram of the structure of ovule in which the central part, this one which you can see, it is known as embryo sac. Okay, what is it called? Embryo sac. Now you can see in the embryo sac, one, two, three cells are located towards one end. This end is called chalaza end. And the cells are called antipodal cells. Means all three are called antipodal cells. Okay? Not one. All of them together, they are known as antipodal cells. Whereas the one which is in the center, this one is called polar nuclei. Polar nuclei or polar secondary nucleus also you can write. There are two polar nuclei which are fused together. So instead of writing polar nuclei because they have already been fused, you can write secondary nucleus because it is deployed now. Secondary nucleus. It is deployed to an I am writing. It is made by the fusion of two polar nuclei. And here you can see in the center, this one, the bigger one, it is known as the, this total structure is called egg apparatus. What is it called? Egg apparatus. In the center we have this cell, it is known as the egg cell. The central one only. And this two side one is there, no? This and this one, lateral one. This lateral one is known as synergies. What are they called? S-Y-N-E-R-G-I-D-S, synergies. Okay? Now, this pore which is present, it is called micropyle, this pore. The gap which is shown here, that is called micropyle. Okay? Now, you can see two protective coverings are there. This one, the first layer, it is called inner integument. Inner integument. And the outer one, this one, it is called outer integument. Two protective covering are there. Outer integument. Okay. Now you can see. So let me explain first. What is the structure of ovule or female gametophyte? Ovule consists of a mass of parenchymatous body which is known as mucellus. Okay. It is surrounded by one or two protective covering which are known as integuments. Some ovule contains only single integuments. They are called unitegmic. The word which is used is unitegmic. Unitegmic means the ovule containing a single integument or covering. Only one covering is there. If two are there, it is called bitegmic. So what is the meaning of bitegmic? The ovule containing two coverings or integuments. It is called bitegmic. The ovule containing single covering is called unitegmic. Then we have, with leaving a small pore or gap in between them, these two integuments leaves a small pore. It surrounds the complete nucellus. Leaving a small pore or gap in it, which is called micropyle. This is the place through which the pollen tube can enter and discharge the male gamete inside the ovule so that it can fuse with the female gamete. Okay? Now you can see that what is hilum and funicle. Funicle is the, now this one I will mark it as funicle. F-U-N-I-C-L-E. The stalk of the ovule. By which the body of the ovule is attached with the placenta is known as funicle. 
I will just what is funicle? I said the definition also. The ovary is attached to the placenta by a stalk called funicle. You can see this one. I have marked this line. Means it is attached to the placenta. So this stalk is called funicle. The spelling not clear here. F U N I C L funicle. And the point of attachment of the ovule to the placenta it is called hilum. That point wherever it attaches, like here it attaches, it is called hilum. H I L U M hilum. Okay, and this one is called raphe. R A P H E raphe. And you can see in the center of this uh, what we say nucellus. There is the embryo sac. I have already marked here embryo sac, which contains different types of cells like antipodal cells, then secondary nucleus and synergies with or egg cell in the center, which is also known as egg apparatus. Okay. So hope you have understood now this one. Now what is mega sporogenesis? The definition of mega sporogenesis is the process of formation of mega spores. Like micro spores means. It is the other name of pollen grains. So, mega spore is the other name of egg cells here. So, process of formation of mega spores from mega spore mother cells or from the ovule. Ovule means within mega sporangium, the mega spores are produced. That is, the eggs are produced. This process of formation of mega spores within the mega sporangium. Each called mega sporogenesis. Okay, okay. Just now, you have seen the diagram of LS of ovule. That you have to draw in copy and label the parts. It's very important for the examination point of view also. So you draw it and do it as homework. Now next is the development of ovule. That is how micro sporogenesis occurs. Just now we had seen that nucellus is the nucellus is a mass of parenchyma body. Now this one is the outermost layer of cells. If it is present, suppose this is the outermost layer of cells present in ovium. That is called epidermis. Below that, if any cell is present here, any layer, that is called hypodermal cells. So some hypodermal cells, we are called hypodermal cells of the nucellus, they becomes distinct and behave as a different type of cell, which is known as archaeosporial cell. What is it called? Archaeosporial cell. This archaeosporial cell, it will divide mitotically, and it will form an outer cell which is called parietal layer, just like it was there in microsporogenesis. It will divide by the process of mitosis cell division to form outer parietal layer, and the inner sporogenous. The inner layer of cells, which is called sporogenous cells or tissue, the one which gives rise to the process um, microspore mother cell. It is the sporogenous tissue only which can directly result in the formation of microspore mother cell. So, microspore mother cells, like here I have drawn MMC, that is microspore mother cell. These are the, you can say the place from where the I'm sorry, mega spore mother cell. This is the one from which the ovules, that is the eggs, are produced. They are the birthplace, development of human gametophyte. This mega spore mother cell is the one which gives birth to the embryo sac, from which the embryo sac will develop. So we can say this word that it is the birth place of embryo sac okay now listen this mega spore mother cell mmc means mega spore mother cell it will divide by meiosis cell division to form a tetrad tetrad means four four cells will be formed four mega spores will be formed these are what four mega spores how they are produced they are produced by the meiosis division of mega spore mother cell. So four mega spores are produced. Mega spore. <coughs> Out of this four mega, this is called tetrad. Three will degenerate. Means any three will degenerate. They have no function to do. They will degenerate. Only one of them will be functional. Suppose this one is a functional mega spore. Functional mega spore. Okay. 
this functional mega spore is the one which will give birth or it will result in the formation of embryo cell. So once again, I will just say about this one. Some hypodermal cell, hypo means below the epidermis layer, some hypodermal cells, they will become distinct, they will become bigger in size and they will be known as archaeosporial cells. These archaeosporial cells, I have drawn it, that they will divide and it will result in the formation of outer parietal cells or layers and inner sporogenous layer. And then this will result in the formation of outer parietal layer and inner sporogenous layer. Inner sporogenous layer can directly result in the formation of mega spore mother cell or by the process of division also it can result in the formation of mega spore mother cell. Now this mega spore mother cell since one is produced it will undergo meiosis cell division and it will result in the formation of four mega spores because we know that during the meiosis cell division one parent cell divides to produce four daughter cells. So here the mega spore mother cell that was formed directly by the division of archaeosporial cells can result in the formation of four mega spores. But out of four, only one is functional, the rest three are not functional. So they will degenerate. This functional mega spore will result in the formation of embryo sac. This one will only give rise to the embryo sac. Now how it happens? I will say in the next point. Okay, now next topic is development of female gametophyte or embryo sac. You know that the functional mega spore mother cell, MMC, just now I have said functional because four were there, only one is functional. So functional mega spore mother cell, it will result in the formation of many nuclei, many nucleus will be formed and it will result like how many nucleus? Eight nucleus will be formed inside by the division of megaspore mother cells because it will undergo mitosis division, the repeated division. So out of these eight nuclei which is produced, eight nuclei is produced, three of them will move towards the one end that is called chalaza end. Three of them will move towards the micropylar end. This is the egg, egg one and these two are the synergies and two of them will move towards the center which will fuse together they are called the polar nuclei earlier they are known as polar nuclei both the polar nuclei will fuse together because they are haploid n plus n two n are there that will give rise to two n that is diploid secondary nucleus and these cells they are known as antipodal cells all three okay all three are known as antipodal cells antipodal cells okay now this type of nuclear the embryo sac in which there are seven cells one two three four five six this one fuses to form one only so it is called seven cell stage seven cell stage but there are actually eight nuclei if you count the nucleus this is diploid that is 2n 1 2 3 3 plus 2 5 plus 3 8 such type of embryo sac which has developed from a single mega spore it is called monosporic monosporic eight nucleate why monosporic because it has developed from a single mega spore mother cell so monosporic eight nucleate embryo sac it is also known as polygonum, polygonal type of polygonum type of embryo sac. Means an embryo sac that contains many nuclei in it. It's called polygonum. And it is found in more than 81% of flowering plants. It is very common type of embryo sac in flowering plants. Okay. In more than 81% of flowering plants, such type of embryo sac is present. Okay. And what we have seen that how the cell is organized within the embryo sac three cells they are towards the chalaza end this is called chalaza end this one is called micropylar end because micropyle is located towards this side and two are in the center that is the polar nuclei both of them are haploid 
they fuse together to form a secondary nucleus. Okay. So now hope you have understood this topic. Now next, what we have to study is pollination. Okay, the next topic is pollination. I'll try to go fast, but cover up all the important points. You have already studied about pollination in lower classes also. Transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of a flower is called pollination. There are two types of pollination. What are they? Self and cross pollination. Self pollination means in which only one plant is involved and it is further divided into two types. What are they? Autogamy and gatenogamy. In your book, Gatono Gemi is spelling is there. Gatino Gemi is correct. Gatino Gemi. Auto Gemi. Auto means self marriage. Gatino means marriage with the neighbor. And cross pollination is also known as allogamy. What is it called? It is known as allogamy. Okay, now next one by one we have to do it first. What is self pollination? The type of pollination, I am just saying, not possible to write everything here in such a short time. Self pollination is transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma of the same flower or another flower burned on the same plant. So what is autogamy? Autogamy means yet one flower is only there from the anther to the stigma the transfer occurs that is called autogamy. Within one flower the marriage occurs, the transfer of pollen occurs that is called autogamy. But if the flower is present on another, on the same plant and the transfer of pollen occurs from one flower to the other flower. If we see technically or scientifically, it refers or it seems like cross pollination because two flowers are involved. Are involved. But biologically, it is only one plant is there. So nothing new, no new genetic constitution is changed. That's why it is called as self pollination and it is called gatenogamy. So how to define gatenogamy? Gatonogamy is defined as transfer of pollen grains from anther of a flower to the stigma of another flower burned on the same plant. That is called Gatonogamy. So this one is called Gatonogamy in the diagram I have shown. Gatono, already here, you can check. And this one, within this flower, it is called Autogamy. Okay? Now next, what is cross pollination? If another flower is present here, and here is the stigma, and if transfer occurs from this pollen, to that stigma of two different plants, it is called cross pollination. Understood? It is also known as allogamy. So now, next topic we have to understand is contrivances of cross pollination. Okay, now next topic which we have to do is contrivances. This word is used, no need to get confused by these contrivances. The other word, simple word is there adaptations for self pollination. So, if in the exam they asked, write two contrivances for self pollination. So what is the answer we have tried? The two answers are number one, homogamy. Homogamy. What is the meaning of homogamy? Means how the plant is adapted for self-pollination. The plant is adapted for self-pollination if the condition is homogamy or the second condition is clastogamy. Clastogamy. Now what are these two terms? Homogamy means when the anthers and stigma, you know that anther is the male part of the flower, stigma is the female part of the flower. So when anthers and stigma of the flower mature at the same time, means they are capable of carrying out the process of pollination and fertilization, that is homogamy is possible. But if it does not, then they have to depend on others for fertilization. So example of homogamy, we can see potato, rice, wheat, in such plants, the condition is that anthers and stigma both of them mature at the same time so i will write in short here anther and stigma anther and stigma mature at same time mature at same time now next one is what is clastogamous example also i said what are they rice mage rice wheat i said not mage okay such plants are Homogamy. Now what is clastogamy? Clastogamy is a condition in which the flowers will not open at all. So if the flowers are not opening means their stigma is not exposed. So if stigma is not exposed, they cannot receive pollens from other agents like wind, water or by the insects. So that's why they have to depend on self-pollination only. And this type of condition in which some mechanical barriers are present that prevent the pollens from other 
flowers to come to that flower is called clastogamous flower an example of clastogamous flower is that ficus you can say pansy balsam plant you know so pansy and balsam here are the plants pansy balsam oxalis in this particular plants oxalis yeah in these plants the flowers will not open so they have to depend only on self pollination so flowers do not open you can say flowers do not open clastogamous condition one more word is there cas that casmogamous casmogamous means the flowers uh, the camellia produces two types of flowers flowers which are similar to the flowers of other species that word is called casmogamous flower so that also you should know the meaning casmogamous casmogamous means the flowers resemble the other flowers of the different species okay now next we have to study is okay now the next topic we have to do is advantages and disadvantages of pollination self pollination now first we will talk about the advantages since the pollination is done within one plant so there is no wastage of pollen grains there is no need of so first advantage i can write no wastage of pollens no wastage of pollen grains because the pollens are not required to be carried from one flower to the other from one plant to the other number 2 no need of the flowers to be colorful attractive showy because there is no need of any insects to bring about any type of agents are not required so no pollinating agents no pollinating agents are required so it is economical also for the plants because even if the pollens are produced in less quantity it is sufficient for them because they do not need to produce large quantity of pollens to bring about pollination as it happens in wind and water pollinated flowers now the next important advantage of self pollination is it helps to preserve the parental characters that also we can write it preserve parental characters means whatever characters are present in the parents it is kept by their children also because within that plant only the pollination occurs now what are the disadvantages the disadvantage of self pollination is it leads to loss of vigor because continuous in breeding or self breeding of the plants can lead to loss of vigor and it will not produce any new varieties because cross pollination is not taking place pollens are not coming from some other plants so there is no combination of genes from other plants that will result in the loss of vigor and it can result in their evolution also they may not survive in the changing environment so they may become extinct now next we have to do is cross pollination okay what is okay now next one is cross pollination already you know the definition the transfer of pollen grains from anther of a flower born on one plant to the stigma of a flower born on another plant is called cross pollination now what we will talk about is the difference between self and cross pollination self and cross pollination what are some of the differences number 1 in self pollination only one plant is there in cross pollination two plants are required two flowers are also required of course but here it can take place within one flower only in self pollination there is no need of pollinating agents no need of agents agents means that wind water and all yet agents are required pollinating agents are needed pollinating agents are needed or required then number 3 self pollination can occur in a very short time in a quick time because within that plant the pollens has to travel so less quantity of pollens are produced less quantity of pollens are produced here pollens are produced in large quantity okay because plenty of pollens are wasted when they are being carried away by wind water or other agencies then fourth point we can say that self pollination it do not produce any new variety do not produce new varieties but this one produce new varieties 
okay then fifth point we can say self pollination can lead to loss of vigor and inbreeding due to continuous inbreeding but cross pollination is used by the plant breeders to improve the varieties of plants and it is good for their evolution also so some more points are there like self pollination preserves parental characters because only one plant is there but cross pollination there is no preserving of parental characters because two different plants are involved and both the characters will mix up with each other to produce the new characters in the offsprings now next we will study about the contrivances or adaptations for cross pollination okay now next you can see we have to do the contrivances that is adaptations for cross pollination it is also called out breeding devices is also there now what are the five different adaptations which favors cross pollination first one is given self sterility what is the meaning of self sterility self sterility means incapable of fertilization so if a flower is incapable of being fertilized by its own pollen means the pollen of the same flower will fail to fertilize that is called self sterility it means they have to depend the pollen of other flowers to bring about fertilization so that means it will favor cross pollination examples of self sterility this uh, prevents self fertilization now next examples is not given here the second one is dicogamy dicogamy two types dicogamy means first the definition dico di means two dicogamy gamy means marriage so different timing of maturation of male and female parts of the flower is called dicogamy like suppose if the male part of the flower matures earlier before the female part it is called proto proto means first protandry the meaning of protandry means andry means andrium proto means first so if male part of the flower matures before the female part it is called protandrous flower but if the female part of the flower matures before the male part it is called proto gyne okay proto gyne check the spelling also proto gyne protandry and proto gyne proto gyne means the female part matures before the male part so in such a case that is dicogamy both the male and female parts do not mature at the same time it means if the male part matures before they have to depend on the female part of the other flower so that will also favor cross pollination only now next one is hercogamy hercogamy refers to the structure which prevents self pollination example the condition in which styles are of different length okay like the structure of anthers and styles is such that mechanically it is impossible for them to bring about self pollination like suppose here is the stigma and the anther is present here in this part of the flower and how come this will climb up to that place the distance between the anther and the stigma is so far away that it is impossible for them to reach up to the stigma so that is called some mechanical barrier how to define it hercogamy is the barrier which prevents the process of self pollination it means it has to favor cross pollination so that pollen from other flowers can get deposited on this stigma and this condition is present in gloriosa okay now next is hetero style hetero means different style means you know this part of the carpet is called style stigma style and ovary so if styles are of different length hetero means different different length they will not favor self pollination it means they have to depend on cross pollination and the last point is unisexuality you know that there are some plants like in maize plant both male and female flowers are present in the same plant such plants are called monoecious monoecious so plants that bear both male and female parts are called monoecious but if male and female parts are present in two different plants that is called dioecious so what type of condition will favor cross pollination the monoecious condition will favor self pollination but dioecious condition example of dioecious plants you can say in which there is male flower is present in one plant example you can say of dioecious one is it is found this condition is present of uh, 
unisexuality. Yeah. This condition is present in the flowers of papaya, you can say, male and female have different different parts or different plants. So in that case, there has to be cross pollination, self pollination is not possible. Okay, so today up to here only, in the next class we can continue with the agents and types of pollination. But what is the homework that you will do? After watching the video, you just write your name in the comment section so that we can come to know how many of them are watching it. Because very few responses, no, they are not. And uh, for the homework, what I said, you will draw the diagram of LS of ovule, the one which I had drawn in the beginning. Then if uh, you write this answer also, question number two, explain the process of formation of female gametophyte okay with the help of diagram and third one differences between self and cross pollination third question then fourth one write any two contrivances contrivances means adaptations for self pollination and cross pollination so cross pollination five points are there for self pollination only two contrivances or adaptations are there so today up to this much only thank you